This week on Inside Jam, Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz team up for night and day. And Bruce McDonald's love letter to Toronto. Watch Inside Jam Saturday at 7 on Sun TV. Tonight on Inside Jam, can we just leave Miley Cyrus and her wardrobe alone? For those who don't know me, I can get a bit crazy. The cast of Grown Ups would like to apologize for imposing this painful film on moviegoers. I'm sorry. I'm not. With police seeming to outnumber pedestrians in Toronto's downtown core, comes the news that the Ontario Public Works Protection Act, which dates back to 1939, has been extended to the summit security perimeter for one week. The regulations give police the power to demand identification from people coming within five metres of the security fences in Toronto and Huntsville, as well as to search their bags. It's the same law that already applies at courthouses. A judge ruling today that police will be able to use sound cannons for crowd control during the G20 summit, however there will be restrictions. Reducing the devices costing hundreds of thousands of dollars to nothing more than glorified megaphones, officers are allowed to use the voice function of the long-range devices, but not the ear-piercing alert function. The cannons, which came under fire by protest groups, can emit alerts up to one and a half kilometers away. Sudbury native Martin Goudreau repatriated today, his body arriving at CFB Trenton after a solemn ramp ceremony yesterday in Kandahar. Goudreau, on his third tour of duty in Afghanistan, was killed by a roadside bomb Sunday. He is the 147th member of the Canadian military to die during the Afghan mission. Ah, the tranquility of cottage country. Oh wait, this is Toronto. And it seems the fear of violent protests against the G20 summit has turned the city's downtown into a ghost town. Empty roads, hardly any pedestrians. Won't last though. No, no, this is likely just the calm before the storm. With close to a thousand protesters expected to camp out when the G20 leaders descend on the city tomorrow. Up in Huntsville though, the wait is over and the much anticipated G8 summit is underway. Prime Minister Stephen Harper meeting and greeting his colleagues this afternoon before enjoying a working lunch and dinner addressing issues like fiscal responsibility and women's health issues. Canada calling on all G8 leaders to make a commitment to the so-called Muskoka Initiative. A commitment of new resources to mobilize global action in reducing maternal and infant mortality and improving the health and lives of mothers and children in the world's poorest countries. I should mention that I've announced Canada's new contribution today, bringing our total contribution to nearly $3 billion over the next five years. It's Toronto's turn to welcome the world tomorrow, where the G20 leaders will battle it out over the global financial future.